what is up you guys welcome back to my channel we are back with another video so today i actually have a very interesting video for you guys today so recently i have been watching this series on netflix titled unsolved mysteries which is a series that was based on the old unsolved mysteries that originally aired back in the 90s now, this remastered Unsolved Mystery show that is currently shown on Netflix pretty much is shining new light on cases, disappearances, murders that were never solved. And it has recently been, well not recently, it has gained a lot of popularity and attention. These are just handful of cases. Now, just imagine the thousands upon thousands of other Unsolved cases, disappearances, murders that were never solved. And this video today, I'm actually gonna, gonna be reacting to a video titled The Strange Disappearance of Dennis Martin. Now, a lot of people have never heard of this disappearance because it has never really been in the national spotlight. It's been kept super low key for various reasons. Anyways, we are going to be reacting and checking this video out. So, you know, without further ado, let's get right to it. On June 14th, 1969, six-year-old Dennis Martin went with his father, grandfather, and nine-year-old brother on their traditional Father's Day outing to the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. At an area of the park called Spence Field, along the Appalachian Trail, Dennis and his brother decided to play a game of hide-and-seek. But the Martins weren't alone. Soon enough, they were joined by another family whose last name, coincidentally, was also Martin. Dennis and his brother invited the other Martin children to play their game of hide and seek. The kids all went to hide, meaning to jump out and scare the adults as a prank. The adults sat on the grass, wise to what the children were doing, but they smiled and humored them nonetheless. Dennis, wearing a red shirt that day, was told by the other children to hide somewhere farther away as to be less conspicuous. Nonetheless, Dennis's father could clearly see him going to hide behind a distant bush. The kids all jumped out to scare the adults, save for Dennis. At first, everyone thought he'd missed his cue, but soon enough it became apparent that Dennis had inexplicably vanished. Mr. Martin, panicked, sprinted down the Appalachian Trail for two miles, but failed to locate his son. He instructed the other Mr. Martin to seek the help of park rangers. As the afternoon wore on into evening, Okay, right off the bat. Um, so apparently these three kids were playing hide and seek and they were being overwatched by three parents um, or three people, one including the missing kid's dad. And during this game of hide and seek, Dennis happened to hide behind a bush and he just disappeared. So, it's interesting. Evening, the area was hit with a horrible rainstorm. Of course the it would. weather would hamper the search efforts subsequent to Dennis's disappearance. About five it miles from the harder. spot where Dennis vanished, in an area of the Cades Cove Valley called Rowan's Creek, another family was hiking, the Keys. The Keys were hoping to see some bears, and they spotted something peculiar either during the Martin kids' hide-and-seek game or else shortly after Dennis's disappearance. They reported hearing, quote, an enormous sickening scream and witnessed what looked like a bear running through the bushes, although it seemed to be not a bear at all upon closer inspection, but rather a large, hairy, rough-looking man. He had something, they said, slung over his shoulder and acted as if he was trying to hide. Soon after the Keys returned home, Harold Key, the father, saw a newspaper report of Dennis's disappearance and learned the FBI had an agent monitoring the case. 
Mr. Key called the FBI, intending to show the agent the exact area of the park where he and his family saw the strange, hairy man. However, the agent instructed Key to meet him and a park ranger outside the park at a separate location. Now, Mr. Martin had an agreement with the FBI in part. Okay. So I keep pausing this. So there was another family a couple of miles away also hiking, looking for bears. And they happened to see a Sasquatch Bigfoot looking figure carrying something on his shoulder. And a couple of minutes before they had heard a blood gut scream. I don't even know how to call it. A blood piercing scream. And that's when they saw that Bigfoot figure that looked like he was carrying something and trying to hide. Now, the FBI showed up and instead of actually going with the key family towards that location so they can point out the exact spot of where they saw that figure, the FBI told them we'll meet y'all at a separate location. That's already a red flag right there. Work service stipulating he'd receive every bit of information about their search for his son. But the Park Service and FBI kept secret their interview with the Key family. Word of the Key family's strange encounter with the hairy man got to Mr. Martin, however, after a reporter from the Knoxville Times, learning of the Key's story from law enforcement, confronted the FBI about it, tracked down the Key family, and reported everything to Mr. Martin. Mr. Martin was furious, demanding to know why the FBI didn't tell him about the keys and the hairy man. As he should. They claimed it was irrelevant to the case. Oh, that the distance yeah. between the bush where Dennis was hiding and the spot where the keys saw the hairy man was far too far for the supposed hairy man to have anything to do with Dennis's disappearance. Dwight McCarter, a tracker for the Park Service, claimed the FBI were lying and walked the trail between Spenceville and Rowan's Creek with Mr. Martin to show it was possible that whomever the Keys saw could feasibly kidnap Dennis as the walk only took roughly an hour or so. The Green Berets were sent in to search the park but rejected the help of the Park Service and anyone who knew the park by heart such as McCarter. They searched for a week. No one knew what exactly they were looking for other than Dennis. At this point, Mr. Martin was livid, feeling everyone was lying to him. He knew about the detail the press wouldn't report and the Park Service wouldn't talk about. The okay. They already, ugh, so many red flags already with this case. The FBI shows up. The Green Beret shows up. Now, if this case is just a simple missing persons case, I do not believe the Green Berets and the FBI would show up within a matter of a couple of days. If anything, it would be just the local police department or sheriff and the tour people in a search party. But already off the bat, the Green Berets and the FBI are already on top of it. And... It looks like the FBI was already withholding information from the father, Mr. Martin. And it looks like, to me, from what I'm understanding, the Green Berets and the FBI were in competition with each other. Instead of cooperating to find the missing kid. And me, as a, if I were Mr. Martin, if I were in his shoes, I would also be pissed the fuck off, bro. Because... The kid, your son is missing. He's been missing for, I believe, it's been over a week now. And these people that are supposed to be cooperating with each other and supposed to be one of the best in the business, they're, they're withholding information because I guess supposedly they don't want Mr. Martin to find out exactly what happened to their kid. And the fact that they're, that both the FBI and the Green Berets are, are not cooperating with each other and more just acting by competition to see who can find him first is just super fishy to me. I don't know. That the hairy man reportedly had something slumped over his shoulder. 
something bright red, the same color as Dennis's shirt on the day that he disappeared. Right, there we go. Now, the obvious answer to this case is that Dennis Martin was abducted. People like McCarter are convinced that this is indeed what happened. Why neither the FBI nor the Park Service will discuss this possibility, we might suspect, is because they know who or what kidnapped Dennis and don't want anyone else finding out who or what that is. Sounds After like it. all, it is a bit strange that the Keys would mistake a man for a bear, unless the man was abnormally large and abnormally hairy. One answer is that it wasn't a man at all who kidnapped Dennis, but a creature like Bigfoot. Another, perhaps more disturbing explanation, is that Dennis was kidnapped by some wild man wearing fur pelts, living off the grid and apart from human society. This is the theory McCarter personally subscribes to. What the person or creature wanted with Dennis is anyone's guess. It's also worth noting that some details of the story, such as the Martins meeting a family with their same last name and the Key family being the literal key to solving the case, seem a little too coincidental, as if Dennis's family was involved in his disappearance somehow. However, this appears very unlikely. The Great Smoky Mountains National Park is highly valuable to the Knoxville community in terms of both its revenue and cultural significance. As such, it makes sense why the communi community wouldn't want to risk its reputation. Nonetheless, there have been many missing person cases involving the park, and while it's possible Dennis simply got lost and died of exposure or was killed by a bear or other animal, as the Park Service reasons, there might be something more to his disappearance more than 50 years ago that the park officials don't want seeing the light of day. That's creepy. What was it called? It was called the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Great Smoky Mountains National Park. Let's go see where this is located. Okay, so we have Nashville, Tennessee here. We have Knoxville, Atlanta, and Charlotte. So as we zoom in closer here, we can see that this entire area right here, it's kind of remote. It's kind of remote. So I, I can't exactly pinpoint the exact spot where he vanished, but look at this amount of wilderness. Just look at the area, look at this right here. So it is possible that he indeed end up, ended up getting lost, but at the same time, according to what is going on here, it, it looks like to me he was kidnapped by a wild man slash Bigfoot. And because of this, in order to avoid public outrage, the FBI and the Green Berets did not want this to be found out by the general public, so they kept it super low key. It's, they kept it super low key from not only the general population, but from the actual father of the kid, which is pretty messed up. Um, so I couldn't imagine what this man went through. Um, it's an interesting, interesting case, and I'm sure there's a lot more details to this case than this seven and a half minute video. So if you guys are interested, I would highly recommend actually, you know what? I, I didn't even realize this was in the search bar. <laughs> I ignore that. Um, I was watching a video. Um, but to me, it looks like it's, it's, um, it's a weird case of it's just so many red flags there's a family that was hiking 
nearby, a couple miles away. And they ended up hearing a scream. And they ended up seeing a hairy man carrying something over his shoulder that was wearing a red shirt, which is the exact color that Dennis Martin was wearing at the time of his disappearance. And when they informed the FBI about it and helped them point them to the exact spot, the FBI denied that and told them that it was irrelevant information and to meet them at a different location, which is, doesn't make any sense. And then the Green Berets, they show up and they're competing with the FBI to find out what happened to Dennis so it's, it's just a lot of mix up and nothing was ever found. And according to the map here, it's extremely remote. So the chances of finding this kid is slim to none. So it's extremely sad what happened here in this case. This case might never be solved because of the information that was kept secret by different organizations so that is pretty much the end of this video thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video and also you know shout out to assorted horrors go ahead and subscribe to their channel i highly recommend checking them out if you're into those specific topics so shout out to them shout out for making that video and um you know with that being said i hope you enjoyed the video and i'll see you guys in the next one